as a host country of G20 uh, 2019, Japan contributed to building the consensus of G uh, G20 AI principles. It's fair to say that uh, we have been successfully raising awareness around the world regarding AI ethics. We must keep discussing uh, AI regulations between countries to reduce unnecessary uh, divergence of regulations. I think any approach is reasonable when we put in the uh, context of their country and it reflects their own country's interests. We need, we need to accept this reality. Let me draw your attention to private initiatives. For example, uh, NEC sitting at this round table has voluntarily had uh, meetings with outside stakeholders to listen to various views on AI and uh, use of data. In addition to each company's effort, private sectors are leading in setting technical standards of AI. A uh, good example is uh, ISOIEC, is ATC1, SC42. So we must respect their work and uh, regional and national standards should be aligned with the international standards. Thank you. In the United States, AI has only recently been, been addressed by Congress through legislation. One important piece of legislation codified was the National AI Resource Research Resource Task Force Act. This will serve as a shared research infrastructure, providing AI researchers and students with access to computational resources, high quality data, educational tools, and user support. Another central AI focus for Congress is research and development, or R&D, and how Congress can craft effective policy that encourages private sector innovation. The U.S. views robust federal R&D investment as vital for U.S. competitiveness in AI. Last year's defense spending bill included nearly $6.5 billion over the next five years for AI research and development. The National Security Commission on AI, an independent commission created by Congress in 2018, has advocated that non-defense AI R&D funding should be increased to reach $32 billion by fiscal year 2026. The international landscape of AI use and development is of the utmost importance to the United States. We live in a time with authoritarian regimes, particularly in Russia and China, who have amassed powerful and impactful economies, making them major players international. We have already, internationally, we have already seen the human rights abuses that can occur when AI technology falls in the hands of authoritarian regimes with the communist, Chinese Communist Party's persecution of the Uyghur population. Democratic countries have a responsibility to lead on these technologies while also recognizing its flaws and the reality that if we ignore or stifle these innovations, they will be championed by authoritarian regimes who do not share our democratic values. I was wondering whether you also wanted to share with us some of the regulatory elements on which like-minded countries and partners could potentially coordinate. OECD AI principles can be excellent guidance on the issue of democracy and responsible use of AI. AI systems should be designed in a way that respects the rule of law, human rights, and domestic values and diversity. Transparency and accountability are excellent to implementing the guidance to ensure a democratic leadership. And the nature of AI technology requires us toward that, that direction too. No one doubts uh, that transparency and uh, accountability are the counterstone of democracy. When it comes to AI um, and the AI Act, um, it is a piece of, of legislation that puts uh, in a way the rhetoric that, that we've built, the vision that we've built over the last couple of years at EU level uh, in a way to work by saying that the evolution of artificial intelligence has to be around uh, this sort of value-based, human-centric, trustworthy notion of artificial intelligence. So that's 
in a way, the key philosophy of how the European Union sees the evolution of AI. The, the big balancing act that uh, we are trying to make at European level is, is to see how we have this philosophy of trustworthy, human-centric AI, while at the same time maintaining a very powerful incentive uh, for our industry, for our businesses, to actually invest and use artificial intelligence as an engine for growth. So it's, it's quite a complex piece of legislation. Um, it has, and I would like to note that also, an, an adaptability uh, mechanism uh, built into it uh, with the fact that are annexes that can be modified in time. Adaptability in a way of the rules can evolve as the technology evolves. And I think that's also a, an important piece of, of, of uh, the philosophy, in a way, in the minds of, of the European regulators. With that, I will uh, move to our uh, business experts. Uh, I will start with uh, Michael Fausten, from, uh, who is the global uh, head of the Bosch Center of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, you, you may or may not know Bosch has the, the, the future vision of creating technology invented for life. That means that we are focused on creating physical products. And our future vision is to have our products either empowered by artificial intelligence or by engineering them with the help of artificial intelligence or applying artificial intelligence in the production of these products. We call this kind of application industrial AI, where all turns around having, as I already said, a physical product empowered or enhanced by artificial intelligence. We see that this is an important branch of application of artificial intelligence beyond scopes that are commonly known as rather frequently web-based applications or purely information managing and, and processing application of artificial intelligence. We have given ourselves an um, AI codex of ethics, which guides us and our engineers and our, uh, all our associates in how to design and to apply artificial intelligence to our products. Uh, we strongly are in, in, in favor of having broad regulations so you could see us and can count on us as supporters because we believe that good regulations which create trustworthy environments are important to create, enhance the acceptance of artificial intelligence driven products in the world. And we see that as value driven countries, as we are united in, in, in this talk, we can be of a role model uh, widely and make sure that artificial intelligence is being applied in a, in, a, in, a, in a conscious, in a responsible and in a trustworthy manner, which uh, will help the society to adopt this technology in a, in a proper way. First of all, and that has been mentioned, AI is a field which is Develop, developing and evolving very, very rapidly at speed is one of the utmost points in being competitive and in being able to stay at the, at the top notch of technology. Um, so what we would encourage to have a constant uh, consultation between international experts, policymakers, researchers, industry, um, in, in the fields of ethics, policy, technologies, and so on, so that we maintain a common view on this fast moving technology and do not have rigid regulations, which are in a short time, not up to date anymore with technology. It is in particular important that democratic countries uh, agree on and, and joint principles for responsible AI that can help focus responsible AI uh, build the trust that is necessary and the human centricity. Uh, and that, again, is so important, as we have seen in uh, a number of uh, societal challenges we are facing that a um, um, member of the parliament, uh, Tragwa Chess, has mentioned, uh, such, as, such as COVID or climate change. It is extremely important to keep industry at the table as they are at the forefront of um, AI um, regulation and development. We have very much welcomed um, also the flexibility that was mentioned before, this 
let's focus on what is high risk and start learn how to actually regulate AI and we can then from there develop and keep the regulation up to date. We are also um, believing that it is right to, 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 to outrightly ban certain uses that are not uh, in consistency with our democratic values. Lastly, and, and here again, I think uh, it is now a real, uh, of real importance that we, we keep a, a close alignment of um, the legislative process of the EU AI Act with the international and global uh, uh, approach to regulating AI and in particular also between the EU and the US. Meanwhile, uh, uh, our company has been investing intensively on the R&D of explainable or interpretable AI technologies and has been providing such solutions to our B2B customers already for something like eight, eight years. Now, we started such research because explainability was indeed necessary in many of customers' uh, decision-making kind of use cases. Use cases. Uh, but we now see that uh, such a white box, a transparent approach is also very useful from the uh, democracy aspect. Uh, we are aiming at leveraging digital innovations to address societal challenges and at the same time to create new economic growth altogether to achieve uh, uh, what we define as human-centered super smart society. And such a vision, I personally believe, actually stems uh, from a long-standing uh, philosophy of business harmonization in Japan uh, called uh, Sampoyoshi, the three-way satisfaction of seller, buyer, and society. So, about the idea of regulating AI, it is important to make a right balance between encouraging innovation and securing democracy. In order to find out how to harmonize these two, uh, I believe that uh, real-world use cases are provided from our sector, I mean private sector business experience, must be very useful. Regarding the innovation aspect, I uh, also emphasize that AI is now making a broad range of contributions to B2B and B2G service space, as well as sustainability issues that are actually the focus of NEC business, uh, including uh, manufacturing, logistics, transport, agriculture, climate neutrality, food loss improvement, and COVID vaccine research. Now, from the viewpoint of encouraging innovation and thereby empowering the competitiveness of uh, democratic digital market, a good design is necessary not to enforce too much precaution measures and cost to the AI system provider side, which will turn out to be particularly serious for SMEs and startups. And what is equally important, I think, must be the quality of AI products and services, as it is essential in securing, securing safety of AI solutions when implemented. And with such an understanding, Japanese industry associations, uh, both JETA and Keidanren, uh, share common direction of pursuing the formation of a trusted quality AI ecosystem. AI regulations reflecting the democracy principles of like-minded nations and regions would be actually the driver of democratic digital market developing social acceptance of AI-based services and products. And several important points to be considered from the industry perspective include coming up with a good balance between securing democracy and stimulating in innovation and legal interoperability across regions, for so both of which multilateral collaboration plays an indispensable role. Um, could you maybe pick up some of these idea, one idea from the industry and um, elaborate, put your thought uh, on them uh, to lay the ground also for our discussion? One of the initiatives under the innovation of Japanese AI principle is regulatory reforms to reduce imp impeding factors in all related fields in order to establish uh, an an efficient and benefit society with the aid of AI technologies. If we will endure uh, democratic competitiveness worldwide, innovation should be a counter counterstone. Earlier in your comments, you um, talked about the importance for like-minded uh, countries to cooperate and work together and lead. I was wondering if you can elaborate a little bit more in how, in your vision on how this cooperation uh, can be achieved and which areas eventually you think it's uh, possible. Whether AI is used for good or bad, whether it is a tool for good or a weapon for bad, uh, in many instances will be determined by the quality of the partnerships that are developed and the ethics that underpin the technology. Uh, and my belief is that the democratic nations of the world 
those on this call certainly are allies, um, but also others around the world who subscribe to our values, believe in individual liberties, believe in, in human rights, and, and have the same democratic underpinnings that we have in America, the values that we all share. Those nations need to come together and collaborate and set the ethical guidelines and boundaries around which AI will operate. I was wondering also whether you could share with us how does AI plays into um, security cooperation between like-minded countries? I think with AI, what actually this means, it means that when you align standards uh, for the way uh, industry will be developing certain technologies, we need to, you need to make sure that interoperability means also an alignment of how algorithms are being developed. So that when you would end up uh, maybe joining up and putting weapon systems together or putting different frameworks that you use to ensure security, uh, including the use of, of certain databases or technologies for, for facial recognition or for biometric matching or any other digital tool that you would use for security. And, that, and if you would want that to be interoperable to, to allow interaction between allies, that then those developments are done again according to, to common standards, according to aligned visions of how industry has to play its role in the security and the, and the security sector uh, and the defense sector, sorry. But there is the issue of education, which uh, I, I, I would really want to anchor it in the conversation here in Europe. And I guess that it would be the same in the US and Japan. When you, we ask today, uh, and I've, I've, I've visited various, uh, various hubs, digital hubs uh, around, around the European Union. When, when you ask them today, what is their biggest challenge? They no longer tell you that it's access to financing, for example. What burns the most today uh, seems to be uh, labor force. Uh, they are uh, wary of whether they will have enough qualified uh, people to actually be able to stay with them as technology progresses, as their businesses progress, powered up by artificial intelligence, for example. Mr. Uh, Mochizuki, I don't know if you want to, if you have any reaction to this last subject that uh, Mr. Tudorake just raised concerning education system, since you brought up literacy as an important uh, part of the, of the discussion. This relationship is, is becoming important and will become increasingly important that not only the provider side, but also the user side of AI, uh, that, are, that is actually facing the citizens and other types of stakeholders, has, has to come up with uh, some uh, uh, advanced uh, literacy to handle AI. Because as I said, for instance, they, they actually de uh, define what type of data sets to, for training to be used. So these parties should, uh, you know, uh, share the uh, responsibility and all together to come up with a trust from the general society to advance AI altogether uh, to bring further value. So in that sense, I do believe that literacy development in non-ICT sector business is also important. And actually, our NECs are um, uh, quality, uh, quality assurance guidelines uh, to, in some parts uh, uh, include such uh, communication with uh, customers in making contracts and uh, responsibility sharing. And that is also coming back to the future you know, and, uh, necessity for enhancing uh, you know, conversation capability related to AI to uh, uh, altogether to come up with a, a more trustworthy and safer use of AIs. In the context of the proposed EU AI Act, uh, you talked about concern with regards to the allocation of responsibilities on the producers. Could you please uh, elaborate further what these concerns are and what could be an alternative way to tackle this topic? We are looking at the AI Act and realize that um, the, the grounding of the framework is the new legislative framework. So it's product safety legislation. Um, and and in, in those, the manufacturer really has the control over how a, a, a product is manufactured and bears most of the responsibilities and then provides the instructions for the user to follow these instructions carefully. Now, in the context of AI systems, in particular standalone AI systems, those that are mentioned in Annex 3, the 
the, the comparison doesn't really work so well. First of all, it is contextual in nature and it is not always feasible for the producer to, to be able to predict all the intent, the, the uses that the deployers called users in the AI Act can bear. Can you share with us, for example, what would be uh, some of the good practices uh, for, for this fora to, um, to exist and how this expert could exchange uh, views and in which way, if you can share your, your views there? What we have to learn as a society, and I intentionally say society, is how to handle the, the risks of or the, the effects of an open world context. Um, we, we will um, develop to our best efforts our products, and we should have a common view on how best efforts should be. What is the ethical rules? What is the technical applications? What is the best practices that we all would stick to? And what, what are things which we all would absolutely not do, which is really important to, to save, have that safely established amongst all of us. But on the other hand side, be aware that an AI behaves in the world it encounters and it, it, it behaves in the, within the data that it encounters. So it's never fully closed. So what we have to learn is how can an AI behave over time? How can we see how we can, can we observe an AI over time? And how would we all agree to react in case something does not behave the way we wanted it, intended it to be? Thank you so much. And uh, Mr. Tudorak, I will leave you the floor for uh, uh, some concluding remarks. I think the first takeaway uh, for me is uh, in, indeed how incredibly aligned, in fact, we are. Uh, and how incredibly aligned we are both uh, at, at a high level in the way we all understand, again, the, the evolution of, of this technology and the impact it has on our everyday lives and our societies, on our economies, and probably like never before, on the fabric of our democracies, uh, in the way we, we, we do politics, in the way we run elections, uh, so on and so forth. The second takeaway that I have is that we absolutely need to keep talking to each other, not only to each other as, as regulators, uh, and this is where clearly issues such as uh, regulatory convergence and standard setting, what I was saying earlier, this is something that we absolutely need to do, but with that, uh, but that we need to talk to each other in terms of regulators and, and, and business and, and industry. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you very much to everybody for participating. Uh, I hope that the audience found uh, this conversation interesting as I did. And I also like to be on the dreaming side, as yeah, Sunori said, and think that this is just the start of a future and a co cooperation among uh, each other. So that's great. And uh, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, taking the time to be with us.